very good evening friends meeting again in the session of philosophy and we are discussing regarding the robert's philosophy the chapter number 5 on the concluding part of it the chapter is vital energy in its universal application where robert tried to explain that correlation between the vital energy inside the human being at the same time vital energy in the in in this universe and he has correlated it with the planets there is a vital energy which is there in the planets because of which they are in continual motion whereas same thing which gives the animation to the human life is the same vital principle which gives or provides a vital energy from which source this vital energy is regained inside the human being and that correlation between the universe and itself he has tried to explain so he explains over there there are basically three sources from which the human gains the vital energy that is first is vegetable kingdom second is animal kingdom and third is mineral kingdom as the human being carries the energy from these spheres at the same time he gets the same source of for the treatment also so he gets the medicine from the same sources from the vegetable kingdom from the animal kingdom at the same time the mineral kingdom and he is trying to correlate that the quantity necessary for every ingredient which is there inside the human being the say it is so infinite symbol it is so small but it affects the vital energy if if that sufficient quantity at the molecular level is not present then patient gains our patient gets disturbed and his health is re- ruined so quantity necessary to produce any change inside the human being is least that is the which is called as the law of least actions and that we can find it out when we learn these things and at the same time hanemans law of law of minimum dose is also dependent upon that and he himself came to the same conclusion that the quantity necessary for a cure in you uh, know in, in order to get cure inside the human being is least possible so he is trying to correlate all those laws of universe with the laws of homeopathy and that's what we were discussing we were on page number 52 let us go ahead with the page third paragraph of the page number 52 the principle the vital energy in the universal application we comprehend most easily the animation the presence of vital energy in the animal kingdom and the medicine has long sought cure through the medium of substance derived from the source that these substances have a tremendous power we know to to be true homeopathy however in distinction from ordinary medicine believes that there to the release of power from within from the minimum of substance through the potent potentization is that which is most quickly and accurately influence the dis, dis, disordered vital force of man on all three planes earlier paragraph he has explained the importance of vegetable kingdom and the dose necessary in order to get the cure when we use the animal remedies or medicines prepared from the animal kingdom it might be a lachesis it might be a black caninum it might be a lysine it it might be anything which is related with the animal kingdom where the medicines are so strongly gets produce its result we get a thorough proving and they are strong in action and they are acute in action these are the medicines those shows strong vital energy because because this source gets a double digested protein what do you mean by it the animals who used to consume the vegetables where the already protein is digested again it is digested in the animal and from that source we get the remedy so here the energy is already double released and that's why the medicines which we prepare from the animal kingdom carries more energy than the vegetable kingdom that's why we used to use such types of remedies in acute toxic condition like as is the crotalus horridus the lacaninum the lysine you just see that their energy levels are very high here the energy is double liberated and that's why they are very strong in force so the first source was vegetable second source was the animal and what is how much medicine is needed medicine is needed in infinite symbol very small quantity so 
you cannot measure that. You can just label that this is the 30 C potency, 200 C potency, but you cannot calculate how much medicine is there because it is infinite sin. And same is necessary in order to get the cure, same is necessary in order to maintain the health. He wants to show that relationship. And that's why he, next paragraph, what he says, we believe that vital energy, as we comprehend, it is not a mass power but an infinite number of egocentric power. We believe also that material substance, mass power in medication would com completely overwhelm the individual vital energy to complete annihilation or would subvert it to the eventual decay and death. We believe that mathematical law of quantity extends through all nature and applies to all vital energy in whatever form and that if this is so, if this is so, it is peculiarly applicable when we are dealing with that infinitely delicate balance of vital force in the individual. Let us look at this law of mathematics with that thought or in the mind. The quantity of action necessary to effect any change in nature is least possible. And the Pinky added, the decisive amount is always a minimum as infinite sin. See, very clearly he is explaining Whatever the change you expect from the human being, the quantity necessary for producing action is very least possible. You just check it in your PSM books. How much iron is needed to, in order to maintain the blood balance or hemoglobin balance? Just check how much copper is required, how much zinc is required. You will find that quantity necessary is so minute it is in microgram, sometimes it is in nanogram, but that is required. If it is not provided, it produces a deficiency. So it itself suggests that the quantity necessary to produce any action inside the human being or to make an effect in, of a change in a, any individual is least possible. This is what is the law. And this law Hanuman have utilized for preparing the medicine. He has started reducing the mass doses into a minute, 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 gradually. It was a process of experimentation. On day one, he has not practiced with the infinite simul doses. It took Kahneman nearly about uh, 30, um, 43 years to reach to the uh, concepts of dynamic medicines and dynamicity in the homeopathy. He has added the concept of vital force in the fifth edition of Organ of Medicine that is published in 1833. So 33 years those and 10 years prior to that, 43 years, he came to the conclusion of dynamic concept of human being and then how to treat it dynamically with the dynamic homeopathic medicine. So it is long study of experimentation with which he has came to the same conclusion as the physics states this law, the law of quantity that is very important or this is also called as law of quantity in mathematics. The quantity of action necessary to effect any change in nature is the least possible. And this law is two marks question for the exam, for the students of sec second year, third year, fourth year. This is the MCQ, law of least action you have to write. And this is simple law. So underline that it should be it, one must know. And what Pinky has added, the decisive amount is always minimum and infinite symbol. Infinite symbol means which you cannot measure. So minute. And but which is necessary. So in order to produce the cure, the same amount is necessary, very minute. And that is sufficient. That stimulus is sufficient to bring back again the state of failure. And then he says, if vital energy is the fundamental power, the motivating factor of the universe, balance must be one expression of the law. It, if the very planets are kept in their place through the influence of vital energy, this must be an inf infinitely delicate balance. We see the effects of balance all through nature and natural expressions. And therefore, we realize the balance power is one manifestation of the law. So this law maintains the balance in, in the universe. This law maintains the balance in the planets. They are revolving in a very specific manner. Very specific orbits. 
never changing, going here and there, never colliding with each other. This is going on for years together. How this is happening? And why this is happening? This is happening because, because the energy between those planets is maintained so delicately that they never change their orbit. And same, it tries to maintain the balance, the vital energy which tries to maintain balance in the planets. In a similar manner, vital energy tries to maintain the balance inside your, you know, inside your body between the trinity of mind, body and soul. That is the function of it, to maintain the balance. But there are many reasons because of which this balance might be collapsed. And if it is collapsed, then a disorder starts. If a disorder starts at the same dynamic level, you have to treat it at the same dynamic level with the infinite simul doses. And then that dynamic disorder can be cured. So see, he is trying to correlate the universe with the human internal universe. This is too important, the correlation, the balance between the external universal vital, uh, vital energy and the internal human being vital energy. And what is the function of them and how much quantity is necessary in order to tackle that vital energy. Those things he is trying to explain. And then he further says, since the earth upon which we lie so delicately poised that it holds its regular position and movements without deviation, According to the law, anything upon the earth which lives or is subject to the influence of vital energy must therefore be in some degree too susceptible to the balance. We recognize more susceptibility to manifestations and interplay of the vital energy and the balance in the individuals of the human race than any other form of existence, since we so often see the effects of imbalance of the individual. This is doubtless due to the influence of his power of choice, which is often influenced, influences his own dynamics and the dynamics of those with whom he, compact, he comes in contact. In other words, his very existence is an expression of the vital energy, but he is also exposed to the influence of vital energy of others. And the interplay of vital energy and balance from many sources may imperil his own balance. The resultant lack of balance in his own vital energy is a disorder that manifests itself in the train of symptoms of disease. Now he is explaining why the human gets disease. There are planets who are carrying their own energy. They are moving in proper direction. But there is no question of point of choice or there is no question of power of choice with the planet. They are according to the nature's laws, and that's why they are moving in specific direction. So every planet, there is no ego with the planets. They move in their orbits, in their direction, without colliding, nothing, and there is no correlation, no disturbance. But human being, the question of power of choice comes. And there are many human beings. Everyone's vital energy correlates with the another's vital force, vital energy. And this balance, so, till it is maintained, they remain healthy. But if power of choice of one person is different than the another one, the difference happens, then, the, then it gets disturbed. The balance gets disturbed. And when this balance gets disturbed, there is a disturbance in the internal economy, which reflects in the form of signs and symptoms. And when it reflects in such a manner, we call it, the ease has gone, the this ease comes. See, how naturally, how in a simple manner he is trying to explain why a disease develops. This disease develops because the vital energy of one individual gets disturbed with uh, another person's vital energy. So when you are human being, is a person who used to remain in company. He cannot remain alone. And there are many vital energies of, of every individual person. When they collide on each other, the disease comes. When they are in harmony, the health is maintained. And this is the basic reason why a disease develops. Simple manner, he is trying to explain the development of disease. How disease comes out, how disease appears. And if this happens at that specific plane of dynamics, you have to treat it at the same plane. No material medicine can cure this. If the hypertension is the result of 
some dynamic disturbance between two people. If you give antihypertensive, it will act only for that period, but it will not cure. But if you are giving medicine, which maintains or which brings that fellow in a normal position, his ego is dis the disturbed ego is coming again to the normal level. His hypertension vanishes forever. It is never get temporarily relieved, but permanently relieved because our medicine acts at that specific plane where the disease has occurred. For that purpose, he is trying to explain all those minute details, how the disturbance of vital force happens to be there. And then he said, mathematics is the science which treats of measuring the con measuring of quantities and ascertainment, ascertainment of their properties and relations. This is an exact science. It is a part of the study of astronomy among other natural studies and it must be applicable in all spheres where there where any concept of measurement and relationship exists. Balance is the state of perfect relationship, the result of perfect computation, and the desired goal of all mathematics. We might say that mathematics is in its highest form is the perception of balance in its highest degree. Thus, we realize that law that applied to the mathematics must be equally applicable to every condition where the balance is the factor. So now he is explaining the science behind that. And science is that, the math, mathematics is nothing but the science, part of science. We used to consider mathematics in our homeopathy. We used to prepare the medicines. We used to prepare medicine in specific manner, the centesimal scale, the decimal scale, or 50 millisimal scale. The scale is nothing but the mathematics. When we prepare medicine, it is in the 1s to 10 dilution. When we prepare centesimal, 1s to 100 dilution. When we prepare the 50 millisimal, it is 1s to 50,000 dilution. We are using mathematics in order to develop a perfect potency and perfect energy to be released from that. So same mathematics works in the field of astronomy. If you study astronomy, it is completely a science based upon the mathematics. It is not um, the thing which is false. The things are very correct, truth, based upon mathematics. Only thing is that no one understands that minute differences, minute changes. It is very difficult to pursue them. If you are able to pursue, then question becomes very simple. Those who never pursue, they say, they say that it is false science. But it is not false science. And he is trying to explain over there that this balance factor is always maintained because, because there works a mathematics. And in the human being, this mathematics runs because of which he remains healthy. If this mathematics gets disturbed, there is even at the molecular level that there are deficiencies there, it used to produce a disorder. If at the molecular level, the increase in quantity is there, it also disturbs the hormones. And that's why he tries to correlate that mathematics is very much necessary in order to understand the health as well as disease. And to consider last, lack of balance in the individual may be engendered by the interplay of forces resulting from his privilege of choice, from the interplay of forces engendered by others and over which he has little or no control, and by the release of power of infinite small amount of in almost any substance, animal, vegetable, or mineral, which has in itself the susceptibility of permutation and activities of vital energy. Here we say the applicability of the mathematical law, the quantity of action, the actual quantity of substance susceptible to action, necessarily to effect any change in the nature, necessary to affect the balance of any living thing, or the relationship between any living thing and circumstances is least possible. The decisive amount is always minimum and infinite. See, he is explaining the physiology. He is explaining that there are multiple factors which happens in human life. You are sitting over there calmly and you are doing every activity and you are healthy. Someone comes and teases you. Everything was going on fine. Your vital force, vital energy was working in a proper manner, maintaining the balance. 
but someone comes whose vital energy affects you because because he says something and there is a quarrel or something some disputes happen and what has happened your vital energy is disturbed because because of some external vital energy force which acted upon you and because of which it has disturbed it reflects in the form of some signs and symptoms you get angry you get violent you get disturbed you get anxious you get frightful and if there is a fear which develops all of a sudden it affects your self so if you are sitting alone and all of a sudden in front of you the tiger comes a sudden fright fear immediately produces a change in your cells in adrenaline gland to secrete adrenaline and noradrenaline in such a minute quantity but which has the capacity to beat the hearts very fast so you develop palpitation dhad 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 why it happens it happens because a small amount of adrenaline noradrenaline is really why why it is released it is released because of some dynamic fear which has developed because because tiger is there so tiger's vital energy affected your vital energy to release a physical uh, physical structural change in the quantity which is secreted by adrenaline and that is so minute and which has the capacity to alter your economics internal economics and you start getting the symptoms in the form of palpitation see the simple example this is how a development of disease happen so quantity of anything which is necessary in order to produce a change inside the human being is always always least possible and that has the capacity to hold the human being and this he wants to explain over there and to conclude what he says further is very important all the elements and all forms of matter are capable of being moved activated by vital energy although they may not themselves possess their this energy within themselves all the elements and all forms of matter possess the possibility of divisibility to an almost infinite degree the greater the mass quantity of the element or matter the more inert they become thus masses Mast iron becomes useful to man, and iron or steel rails, bridges, utensils, or the other material objects. Iron is divided in a divided state, entered into the human physical body, and as a component part of that, which is activated by the vital energy, and as a part of physical body, the vital energy plays through it. Iron, even when massed and and inert, has the power of attracting. vital energy in the form of electricity but iron in mass form is not capable of balance and direction within itself to degree that it is possible when its divisibility is greater see he is explain he has explained simple example take a simple example that if you by mistake you have consumed a iron um, there is a some um, iron particle in a big or it is a coin which is made up of iron and in, by accident you have consumed if it has gone inside your body does your hemoglobin increases does it released uh, the iron in elementary form to produce more hemoglobin no what happens it get passed without producing any change because in the material form when in the, it has ingested it never it is an inert but same iron if you prepare by the homeopathic method by the method of potentization or trituration or succussion and you go on utilizing it the same iron which was inert in the material form starts acting producing its own signs and symptoms producing its own effects on the human body and works to make a change see this is very very important entity which he is trying to explain over there so if, what it indicates it indicates the things should be so minimum in order to make a change inside the human being the and that's why he has given the name of law of least quantity this law is very very important law which explains why homeopathic medicines are needed in so infinite simul doses because they are strong enough to produce the change the greater the mass less the action minute the um, entity it will produce more and more change
And then he concludes, it is a question whether matter itself, which we call at times inert, does not manifest active properties. In other words, it possessed, in other words, it's possessed by activity and motion. This has been demonstrated by Madame, Madame Curie investigation. Madame Curie's investigation of radioactive substances. And again, in the far-reaching discoveries of the Langwin in his demonstration of activity within the atom of, his, of the physical cell. The greater the divisibility of the element or the matter, the more they exhibit the possibility of permeability of the vital energy. The energy being not dependent upon the mass, but on the play or balance between the positive and negative poles of the atom. Vital force is capable of three forms of action, motion, direction, and balance. These manifestations of energy are an integral part of the exhibition of vital energy. Growth and development are directed motion, and in the degree of their perfection, do we find the manifestations of balance? See, he, is, he has explained simple example of Madame Curie. We have heard her name in the radioactivity. She was the first one who, has, who came to the understanding of radioactive substances. Her experiment shows that there are certain elements which loses their radioactivity, throws their energy from it. And that energy has the capacity to alter the human state of health, even though it is not consumed directly. She was the first one where such a thing which she has explained. Same is explained by Langwin in the demonstration of the atom, mm, uh, demonstration of the activity within the atom of the physical cell. Both experiments shows there is minute quantity is very, very minute, but it has the capacity to alter the human state of health. It never goes inside in material form, still it acts because it is so minute. If it is so minute, has the capacity to alter the human state of health at, the, at that specific dynamic plane, then we must think how much medicine is required in order to get the result. The quantity necessary should be so minute because the energy which is carried in this universe is in such a minute form which enters inside human being by the um, this vehicle that is the either you whatever the medicine which you use from the vegetable kingdom, animal kingdom or mineral kingdom and you give it in such a minute quantity brings back again that balance which was lost because of this process and patient becomes healthy. In order to show this balance between the universe, the vital energy of the universe and vital energy in the internal economy, he has written this whole chapter. So things are, why he is explained all those things? In order to show that homeopathic science is the only medical science which has a correlation between the chemistry, the physics and the biology. It is not just what Hanuman thought. It is not just what Hanuman felt. It is not a speculation. It is the product of chemistry, biology, the physics, and the dynamic science. And then the homeopathic science there. These three chapters written by H.A. Robert related with vital energy, they are most scientific chapters to explain the concept of vital energy and vital force. If we are able to understand them, which if anyone fights with you, you are able to fight with him because we know the science behind it. The purpose is only for that purpose. And that's why he has explained all those things in detailed manner in this specific chapter. So all theoretical chapters of this, we have finished the second year syllabus. Now, the chapter, which is next chapter, homeopathy and fundamental laws, that goes in with the practical part of organo medicine and the, its correlation. So next chapter, we'll start with the homeopathy and fundamental laws in tomorrow's session. We'll finish that chapter where you'll learn many, many laws which are very important and we have to understand them. So tomorrow we'll continue with that. Today evening, we'll have a remedy Theorem Metallicum, a big remedy, constitutional remedy. Just now we have read about iron. We'll read the iron today from the Materia Medica. 
Alensky notes. It will take at least two lectures to learn the pyramid from the Alensky notes. It is a very important constitutional remedy we have to do. Many aspects are there with the pyramid. So today evening we'll meet at 8.15 with the pyramid alley. So thank you for being there. We'll meet again at 8.15. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.